Alright guys, we're back. Hello, hi, howdy. Just waiting on uh, players who are probably watching the end of that game, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know, that was, that was crazy and fun, but one of these two are going to go up against them. Now, this, I, I love that, like, every, everything at this point literally is a rematch of a rematch of something, right? Like GSL, VSL, Corsair Cup, Ting, etc. This is the Ting Open um, all over again. Live versus Gumiho, best of five. Really silly best of five, too. Yeah, I'm I'm sitting here actually praying that we get uh, another Thor in that. <laughs> Although, yo, petty feels bad man moment. I had the most fun casting that match with Nate. And I don't think you cast with Nate, because I did the first two games with Nate, and then you and me afterwards. And in the Cyan interview, he references you in casting that game. Uh, like, no, I definitely man. cast with Nate for that one. Oh, whatever. Point... Point. Well, I, I, I did check. the I did the game with the Thor because that's what I remember talking about. So I was just like, "Oh, this story was my story, but you know, it's the only girl, whatever." Nobody cares what poor Riff kid. Oh, but uh, okay. I don't remember. My point of bringing this up is not not to take un blanket whatever shots. It's actually that this is just this is already something could flop and be a two zero. Maybe it'd be really bad, but we've actually seen within like like within weeks this is a really good matchup i don't think this will be as close as beyond an innovation but i think it'll be fun mm. and that's not like oh riff is trying to like sell the cast of course he's gonna say it's gonna be fun like i legit actually think this will be a fun match it might be better it might be actually even i don't know uh we'll see of course but uh remember innovation was still a 2-0 even if the games are very close i'm just thinking a lot of Rizkumi might be a 2-1 with cloak close games maybe either way the important factor here though is that the winner of this goes on to fight against hero in the grand finals and i don't know who i want to have do that more regardless guys i'm gonna be taking off in a moment after these intros i need to just take a quick break so in the bottom left we have size from gaming's red terran gumiho in the top right is the blue terran he is alive all right, so we don't normally get to do this. Do you want the camera on you, on Crank, on Naruto? I mean, we get to do on it Alicia? pretty occasionally. On the Chinese <laughs> it's, guy? It's okay. It's, it's, that's okay on me. Why is it mean? Because normally we don't get to pick the other. It's always you and me, right? Like, we don't want the other observers to piggyback. That was my, my point. But okay, camera is on you. Uh, be right back. Okay. Um... Yeah, their their game series is pretty crazy in the uh, Ting. I think it was actually three zero, despite the the craziness of the games, which is what made it even like a bit crazier. Was that someone would look at the score and be like, "Well, I guess I know how it went down," and really, really, you don't. <laughs> um, but don't don't quote me on that. I have a, a faulty memory, I suppose. But anyways, we have Gumio going for double gas on Proxima Station. This is one of those maps where you can feel quite comfortable, even. Going for one racks expand, where in any other map you're always going to be afraid that they uh, proxy racks you, or even just multiple racks, even at home, would still be enough to punish your one racks expand. It's it's a brutal matchup in the early game, but with such limited area for the reapers to jump up on, usually you're pretty safe for the racks expand. But if you want to be aggressive, if you want to take control of the game, uh, Gumi has also proxied in the past as well, uh, like the starport then, yeah, for sure, you can still go for a one base build on Proxima. It's just going to be a bit difficult to get actually into the main base and actually threaten uh, alive in this case. You're going to need either a medevac or you're going to need to hope that their supply depots are down. Or you're doing some variation of a, of a tank push, which really one base tank pushes aren't seen uh, outside of like Master Diamond League TBTs, I guess. Because <laughs> they're, they're just very effective at, at holding it, whereas uh, lesser skilled players, non-pro players aren't. Uh, but Reaper versus Reaper are going to happen here. Alive perfectly comfortable with keeping a defensive Reaper. So he just looks for it on the ramp. Gets that first shot because of it too. And will continue chasing. This could have been a, this could be a really bad move. If Gumio is going for a second Reaper. Then maybe Alive misses that. And even lets it up into his main base. Which you just, you know, you're not supposed to let happen. Maybe it doesn't deal a lot of damage. But you're still like supposed to stop being able to scout. But there's no second Reaper. Gumio went way quicker into the starport. And now uh, Gumio's even winning the Reaper battle. It's alive, kind of 
lost the upper hand by roaming around like he did. It's so it's like a lot of time buying, but unfortunately at this point in time, they both don't know what they've gone for. Gumia is the only one that can feel confident that he won't take damage, most likely, whereas Alive still is a little uncertain, like, okay, will I take damage? What is he going for? Is it a drop or is it Cloaked Banshee? Or something else. Those are kind of the two options. Uh, and it is Cloaked Banshee. It was a Cyclone push or more Reapers. He would have already seen that with his one Reaper. Or would have already been at his front door. And it's not. So. Uh, Cloak Banshee. Probably starting to actually like just take off the things that are available still for Gumiho. Which, again, in a live situation here, hasn't seen anything from Gumiho. One of those situations could still be a one act expand. He doesn't know. Whereas Gumiho, actually, I don't think... And he doesn't know either. Like, it could be one base for one base. They, they have no idea. But he's going to find out soon. The Spanish is going to go into the main base. It's going to see two Cyclones, a handful of Marines, and a Viking. And probably figure from that that the Command Center is already done and finished. Uh, and it is. He's only just finishing now. 90% done. The Banshee does have some potential for damage. There is only one scan in like six seconds here. The Viking pops out a little bit to the right of the Banshee. Cloak is done. There it goes. Uh, scan is now available. But if he scans, I think the Banshee might still be able to get away. It really depends on how far away out the scan it is already. Very careful. Very careful. Um, by killing six SUVs though, he's actually okay with losing it, I would say. This is already really good damage. Alive's being very stingy with the scan. He wants to actually kill the Banshee, and unfortunately, in order to do that, he would have needed both Cyclone lock-ons, a really perfect scan, and the Viking power, too. So it just actually dodges around, comes back into the main base, gets a couple more SEVs, and Alive... This has taken way too long to clean up, and it's killed so many SEVs. Like, combined, this is really bad. He doesn't use the scan because he knew the energy was going to run out soon and his raven was on the way anyways and that's a good move but there is a second banshee available so if this even gets three more SCVs, which it can do just by sacking itself that's already bad news alive has finally gone down in the SCV count from this where for a long time he, he actually was still even or even a bit above just from that earlier command center now he is eight workers down after 16 SCV losses those are some pretty worthwhile banshees uh, attack at the front is very awkward. He does see it with a Reaper, so he should be prepared for this. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. But it, it's definitely weird. And Gumio takes a third base from this advantage point, uh, too. So, good good stuff. Now, Alive did manage to squeeze in a second barracks. Oh, both barracks, actually, with two tech labs, too. So he's going to have Simon Combat Shield still faster than his opponent, and production faster than Gumiho, but he did take quite a loss. If Gumiho had gone to the front base unscouted and sieged up, Alive would be in a very, very bad position. Um, but he's going to scout it again with a Marine that is actually very cleverly placed. Actually, in Legacy of the Void, they added the shadow, the, the, the rim of the unit when it's behind things. In Heart of the Swarm, it didn't do that. <laughs> and things could be hidden forever. But anyways, uh, because he knows it's on the way, he just moves down the, the third base. He still had to be careful because he didn't know if there was going to be medevacs picking up into the main base. He had to be very, very sure of where Gumiho was going. But now that he is, he moved down because of it. <laughs> Another Banshee. I didn't even see this third one being produced, so I'm even surprised. But a third Banshee comes in here and kills six more SCVs. Seven, actually. It's one last one before it dies. I mean, he does thwart to main push to his third base, but there's actually not even a third base to really protect, whereas Gumiho's third is turning into an orbital right now. Gumio only down in that combat shield timing at this point. Sim is also halfway done, so that might be an issue. We'll see. But combat shield, certainly. Because I do believe he only has one tech lab. That means that his combat shield is going to be really, really late. And he's taking that into account, it looks like. Um, you know, he did scout the lack of a third base, which means that Alive has got to have a pretty decent army. So he's going to invest into a bunker, which looks so weird, but that extra health might just be enough to save his tanks from what could have otherwise been a really good concave. Vikings are covering the main base, so he's not even really taking into account the possibility of a doom drop. But it looks like Alive's going to force it, and unfortunately these Vikings just, just moved out of position even further. Very unfortunate timing. It's a big deal, too. Alive might just take a big lead from this. In fact, actually just might end the game... Gumeho gets so many leads 
and dies to a doom drop. Well, that's that's TBT, I suppose. I guess you should uh, clarify. The one thing he didn't lead was combat shields and upgrades. So that was like the perfect timing to try and kill Gumiho. And that's exactly what Alive should have done. And he did it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you for casting that game. Sorry, guys. I'm, um, my stomach's bugging me. So I was just kind of lying down for that game. I wasn't really, I just kind of listened. Uh, I ate something last night. I shouldn't have. I'm 100% sure. Being an adult who's lactose intolerant is a horrible life to live. And I know some of you can get pills for that roof and stuff, but sometimes you just forget once in a while, okay? You just forget. So, really? Tough life. You know what my dad did when uh, he got lactose intolerant? Full vegan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he didn't go immediately to full vegan, but eventually he did. I like that solution. It's like, why can't I have milk? Well, I guess I just won't eat anything to avoid ever having milk. Easy solution. <laughs> Yeah, there's actually milk in so many weird things. Like, did you know there's milk in salt and vinegar chips? No, that is such a weird thing. Yeah. What? Same with uh, lime tortilla chips. He's he's learned and he's learned to read labels on everything, even when he think there couldn't possibly be a reason for milk. That is that is. I'm gonna have to look at that now. I I I'm just like WTF. I know. Just blowing blowing everyone's mind right now. Uh, well, we're getting a game two. It's Newkirk Precinct. Sorry, um, I didn't catch who won that game. Alive. Okay, we saw the cat. Oh, Nugget! <laughs> Nugget gets some full screen while we load into the game. What's that, guys? Oh, you can see where she? God, her fur's she's been so shaved. <laughs> she's so cute. All right, well, let's not miss any of the game. Let's hop into it, ladies and gentlemen. Game number two, and I'm sorry, you just said it. Who won? Alive. All right, he's up one point to zero. Actually, let's swap that around in the overlay. Um, shift, there we go. In the bottom left, he has, of course, recently joined the ranks of my insanity. It is alive. In the bottom right, for Psystorm, is the Red Terran Gumiho. I tell you as well, give you a little bit of cat cam just for the start of the game, but then we'll take her, take her and put her away after. <laughs> I wish I could show Apollo as well, just looking so dejected on the floor. Well, you had the um, the cat cam fundraiser. You just need to get the dual cat cam fundraiser going. <laughs> Three cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Megadox says that was a Rifkin drop. Um, re I wasn't here to see it, so I'm, I, I, I can't agree or disagree. Well, it worked, so he's actually trying to give you a compliment. Oh, excellent. Ta-da. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Well, but now I'm all paranoid that I didn't get the winner correct. <laughs> Pretty sure it's said alive at the end of the game. <laughs> oh God. Should Man, I just the thing ask? <laughs> no, no, no. It's 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 alive. Okay. The thing was is that it did make a lot of sense. Like alive was up 20 armor supply. He's up in upgrades. He had combat shields. If he got his army unloaded, which he did, he would have won the game. So, I mean, Gumio could have done the old, like, college try, bring his tanks up, siege him slowly, Viking try and pick off the medevacs, but he had really not a lot of army. A lot of very important units, but units that didn't work well without buffer, and that's that's certainly what he was missing, so. He, he's it was, girl. um, what? Can you poke Nugget? Not, like, mean, but just, like, poker. Thank you to New Able for the 30-month reset, by the way. Oh, she's so cute. This new kitten is best kitten. Okay, they had a pretty slow opener. They went, they went safe openers on this one, so that's why we're playing with the cat. But let's, uh, let's lose the cat cam for now, I guess, because we are gonna have the game start kicking off. So bye bye, Nugget. Oh, we'll see you more later. You're so cute. All right. So for Alive and Gumiho, <laughs> we do have Gumiho. I'm not sure what they do with his SCV is. I guess he wanted to get the extra shot on that so his Reaper could take the fight. But unfortunately, Alive doesn't fall for it. And he focuses down to chase that Reaper. Uh, combat shields or combat drugs starts kicking in, but he almost got in range for a shot. There we go. Stops the combat drugs. And he's going to get the kill. Gumiho loses the Reaper. He loses the SCV. That was not a good start for him. Oh, you brought the cat back with you. No, no, she came to me. She was like, don't leave. And then she jumped up. 
<laughs> well, I don't have the camera on, so people can't see the silly face you're making. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the the Reaper fight actually went so well for for Live that this actually poses a small problem for Gumiho because if it is like any sort of follow up with Hellions, well, guess what? The Reaper grenade actually ends up making those Hellion fights a little bit more one sided. Right. Um. <clears throat> cat game aside, the the laws of Reaper can snowball, and it's it's actually quite scary for Gumiho, who just has to be very careful, and he is. You know, the Marines are spread out; they have the high ground advantage, and it works out. This was not a case of one base versus a. Uh, Two base where it really snowballs and well, there'll, there'll, be, there'll be okay. Give me that in fact, probably gonna get some revenge with this Raven, if I had to guess. Uh, Raven? It's gonna be, be Raven versus Medivac drop. Yeah, that's actually, it's gonna be a little bit awkward too, because the Raven built so slow, it might just, you know, not intentionally, but definitely be at home to defend. The poke at the front's a little bit distracting. I don't think Give me a super, like, tunnel vision on this, but. Right now, there's nothing ready to catch this drop. In fact, that Reaper's going to meet up with the drop. There we go. <laughs> so what am I in Reaper Marines? Uh, that Raven is going to be able to auto turret and detect the Widowmine. That's like the really good news. I like that he focus oh. fires it down, actually. That was really nice. Damn. Range auto turret's not so bad either. Uh, this looks like it be enough, especially if he tries to snipe the Raven. Yep. Which he tried, and that would have been very useful if he did get the snipe. It doesn't work out. Well, good deflection out of Gumio, but he is still down workers. I mean, not like, oh my god, Gumio loves a bunch of workers, but this is just the consequence of having his command center a little bit later than his opponents, right? So, a couple behind. And I like that defense. Now, there's another attack coming, but it's going to be coming down the, s the front door through the corridor right outside the door. I'm, I'm trying to rhyme, but it's not working. Point is, there's tanks with this. And Gumio doesn't quite have... Like, he's got the, the, them in the main... Not down here outside the natural. So if Alive gets a good position, he might just be able to take a couple of really good shots to start the fight. Hmm. Well, if Alive just contains, it also is worthwhile. Uh, which he might just be the only thing he can do. Uh, oh, <laughs> That's really bold. Cause he had... Bad timing. Bad Wait timing. a minute. Wait a minute. So he canceled it, though. Because he had started... Or maybe he didn't cancel it. He didn't finish it. But he queued it up over here. And I guess decided oh, to move it. Oh, wow. That sucks. That sucks. I mean, that's a hundred minerals. It's not. Ah, it's not devastating. It's not like a hundred gas, but yeah, you know, that's it's just so easily avoided. Ah, uh, cancel building some shop and shift K. Supply depot does though. Two Vikings managed to pick off a supply depot. Feels bad when all your buildings are mechanical. Mechanical, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll lose the Vikings, however, so no chance of regaining that Viking control for alive. Uh, he's going to try and abuse the natural, but without the Viking control, I do wonder if it's going to be worth it. It's going to be hard to stay up here. That's a big part of why he's dropping the Marines. Needs the high ground vision more than anything else. And while he gets a good shot off at some tanks, I don't think he can stay here very long. And Gumiho's mm. defense, once again, looks quite good. Yeah, this doesn't seem like it's a worthwhile effort for Alive, who... Okay, he's still he's still in the lead here. He actually got ASEVs, so maybe that was worth it. He's now up 13. It's... Yeah, but Gumiho's got the third. If he didn't actually have that third finishing as we speak, I would be a lot mm. more convinced about those SCV kills. True that. Um, yeah. It, it's actually... I, I'm going to pay attention to the income graph, I suppose. See how it really works out. You know, 11 SCVs up plus third command center started at least for Alive. He's not going two base all in. We'll see how it works out. Uh, and on location, because Alive, of course, is feeling a little more confident. Alive also has faster upgrades, but Gumi is going to catch up with Double Engineering Bay. Uh, he just needs some medevacs, and he can start applying pressure once again. These are not medevacs. It's a Raven and a Viking, but still, the escort mission can do some damage. So you can land the Vikings. They can shred the SCVs. I mean, he knows he killed his opponent's Vikings, so there's no necessity to actually keep these in the sky. But the auto turret is going to be enough. He walks away. This will get, like, four or five SCV kills, maybe even six. Uh, mm-hmm. Not bad. Uh, Alive did res so he he didn't really respond, but he did decide to go for a medevac job of Marines and take his tanks home. Not working out though. No, uh, and he's gonna get caught with the Vikings coming back home too. Oh no! Oh no! And he can't really push forward with his tanks anymore because they're they're really only tanks. Like six Marines, not too too helpful here. So that was that was just looking for a freebie third, I think again. But we know that Gumio made his third in the main, or natural. 
I will say there's been some really good defense this game out of Gumio. Just uh, multiple, multiple times, multiple, multiple fronts. And I thought that that drop was actually going to go really well because the Vikings were out of position. Did not expect that to backfire on him so badly, and I guess he didn't either. Yeah. I mean, that's that's why he did it, right? It sounds like a smart move, but the Vikings, well, they were uh, just there in time. So Gumio has successfully defended almost every single push, but he still has been down in supply just from the early game and from dealing with the pushes and being at a loss earlier on. Ah, He's but... probably going to get his lead in upgrades. Yeah, that plus one armor is going to be really nice. <laughs> Feeling like innovation and beyond all over again. But right. that will mean, like, because they're both going to have combat shells, they're both going to have stim, but when it just comes down to it, brass tacks, alive marines are going to be worse than Gumi Hoes. Tanks are in a pretty nice spot. He goes for round two in the same spot. This Brace the depots. Yeah, a little bit late to do that. If, if he pushes back the marines, though, the tanks don't have a lot of staying power, because then he can just unload on top of the tanks, but he didn't quite catch all the marines, unfortunately. He does pull some of the SCVs into the geyser, though, and away from the tank, so he's not going to lose this whole mineral line. But he's still taking some pretty nasty losses. Mm, the tanks take out a good chunk of the marines before everything is been done, so not too bad. Medivac tries to distract and go to the main base, and it is an important distraction because Alive already has reinforcements going to that third base, and there's only one tank. Maybe the other two will siege up, but I don't think that'll be enough either. That should be kind of questionable. If Alive concaves, he could destroy this. Or drops, either one. Uh, scans ahead, is gonna try and go for it. He kinda splits up a little bit. Nope, for the tanks forward. Uh, okay, all right. He needs to steal one of those Vikings to catch that medevac that's kinda wasting time here. Otherwise, this happens and yeah, Marines unloading the main once again. Super mm -hmm. duper annoying to have to pull this for even just a moment. Trying to focus down the engineering bay. I actually like that if you've been able to pull it off, but as you can see, yeah, it's all just gonna shut down. Yeah, it does. Uh, some pretty good army positioning here from Alive. I think he's starting to play a little more conservative considering what his drops and attacks have done for him so far, which is keep his lead, but still like not exactly been as effective as I think he's wanted. So pulls back the main army, just lets that drop go, trying to catch up on uh, upgrades. We'll see if you can grab fucking like right now too. So it's, it's still very, very obviously been money for Alive behind this. I like that too. That's a big part of not playing that two-base all-in style, but upgrades are kind of matched out now. Nobody really has a big, big lead. Although, uh, Gumi will be finishing his 2-2 two -two much sooner, so there might be a window of opportunity here for him. Yeah, I'm a little worried, too. Like, it's it's a decent chunk of time where it's ahead, and he is pressuring. Uh, losing his position on Newkirk is very annoying. It's not game-ending, but it is super annoying. Mmm, mm, waste scans. Well, he got the siege what? off first, but he's going to pick off that medevac, so high ground vision is forced through scans here. Yeah, uh, he probably send another medevac forward. Uh, no one has vikings anymore, although Live is trying to get them. Oh, Gumio is bringing nice. his vikings forward now. Yeah, nice try, zombie robe. <laughs> ah. um, but Alive is trying to get vikings as well, so... I mean, if you get five, maybe he could take care of this, but obviously that point defense run is going to be something, too. No, denied. Uh, this is tough because, you know, there's not that many tanks here for Gumio, but he does have a possible concave set up with auto turrets too. I think he could break this. Not if he gets caught, though. Uh, I think he had an idea of what was happening there. Just a little bit too late to punishing Gumiho's rally, meetup, whatever you want to call it. So Alive keeps his third base alive and protected, more importantly, because that, that could have been under a lot more pressure if things went a little, a little bit worse. I think he has a drop or something going to the main base, which Gumio scouts the center tower and pulls back his marines with. This should not be too bad of a, a cleanup here. Gumio also has those upgrades now, 2-2 two, two versus 1-1. One, one. Yeah, pretty easy peasy. That'll change soon enough, and there wasn't any substantial leads gained off of the upgrades. No, actually, that's that's two pretty important TVT series we've cast where that's there's been pretty obvious upgrade disparities. But they haven't played mm -hmm. the craziest, most insanest role that led to like a quick victory. Uh, this, however, oh god, the command center. There's no way the command center doesn't die. <sighs> that is so dead. Gumiho's caught between a pretty. It's it's actually a rock and a hard place. There are some reinforcements from alive back at home anyway. So if he had gone for the base, that might not have worked out. 
and just straight up loses a base, but he's going to get a huge surround. Oh, damn. I don't know. I, I feel like Alive can afford to lose this, though. Right here, this is this army, this represents his advantage this game, because while he's chasing up north... Oh, those aren't medevacs. I thought medevacs were loading up and going down south. But <laughs> the, the point hype is, is real. <laughs> well, the point still stands, though, where this is Alive's advantage this game, right? He loses this. He's actually not totally SOL. Look at... This may not have been drops in the bottom, but look at this army he's still back at home. Lots of tanks, lots of marines. It's a good thing, too. Um, th th that's a substantial amount of tanks, so he's just been very consistent about producing and saving them. Without tanks at home, this could have been a too substantial of an army supply be doing nothing effectively right now. But I think the tanks will hold. Uh, Gumio's well, got to think about going for a doom drop, but now he sees that there's like seven Vikings. Yeah, Alive's also trying to guard that position. He doesn't want his tanks picked off one at a time. Easy peasy. He will pick off the Vikings before the fight. And Gumio's just got all those tanks to deal with, and he just can't chew through them. GG. Whoa. Oh, boy. Whoa. We got that rematch. That rematch, Arino. Hello. All right. Yeah. So Alive takes a series 2-0. Congratulations. This now leads into a best of five grand finals where he'll fight against Hero. Now, this went a little bit uh, disgustingly <laughs> at the GSL Super Tournament Finals. But at the same time, it was kind of cool because I don't think you looked at the bracket of people playing from even just like the round of eight or, or anything like that. And I, I really don't think you call Hero and Alive in those finals. Like maybe Hero, certainly not Alive. But it was really good to see them both actually make it that far. Yeah. I was, yeah. The thing about Hero is that everyone always remembers his glory days, which are certainly very, you know, they were pretty long spanning and it was a good time for Hero, but ha. it was like four months where he wasn't doing anything at all. So that's that's where Rifkin's Korean ignorance plays well. I didn't watch <laughs> a lot of Korean Starcraft, so I didn't actually see Hero ever do well until literally he joined Root Gaming. So uh -oh. I had heard of CJ Hero and that was about it. <laughs> But no, I've, I've really enjoyed getting to see Hero on route. He's, he's been playing uh, absolutely like a madman. It's been really cool and really fun. But all right, guys, we got to set up for these grand finals. Like we said, it's a best of five. Sit tight. We'll see you soon.